Hey everyone, just a quick note to start this video. Intel's 11th Gen Core desktop CPUs, aka Rocket Lake, launched today and reviews are up for multiple different reasons. My video is not quite ready yet, so that will be up later this week and I'll be focusing on the 6 core 11600K. That's all I have to say for now. Back to the regularly scheduled video. I realized recently that I have a lot of boxes that have arrived and I haven't opened any of them. So I'm gonna do an unboxing video today, hooray! I know I don't do these very often, but when I have so many boxes and I'm going to unbox them anyway, it might as well make a video of it and show you guys too. I don't even know what's in some of these boxes. Some of these are things that I've ordered. Some of them have been sent by vendors. I do have several things that are from Intel for their 11th gen CPU launch. And I have stuff that's been arriving for build projects that I'm working on right now, such as uh, my personal PC rebuild that I just posted the video of last week. Not much much more to say for an introduction besides that. So I've got my knife. Let's unboxerate these unbox. Let's take things out of boxes. Excellent. Corsair has expanded their new case lineup with the 5000 series, a premium chassis with three versions available. The sleek 5000D, the 5000D Airflow, and the 5000X with tempered glass panels and three 120mm air guide RGB fans. A spacious interior provides room for multiple radiators or up to 10 120mm fans, and there are tons of convenient features for building like hinged removable panels, flexible storage options for hard drives or SSDs, and rapid route cable management guides. Available in black or white, so click the sponsor link in the description for more. I was gonna try to do these in some form of order, but uh, I realized that uh, I took a bunch of labels off of things and I don't actually know which box is which. So things might be a little random, but I'm gonna try to start with the uh, recent new egg orders I've placed. Ah. Cleaning up after an unboxing video is always lots of fun. All right, this, I know what this is. These are hard drives. Beautiful, this is actually pretty straightforward. Uh, so if you guys watched the video where I built the first version of the new uh, editing system that I'm gonna be replacing Riptide with, I tried to get a second WD Red 10 terabyte hard drive for that build. And I had actually ordered one from Amazon. It was the weirdest Amazon experience ever because it shipped and then I got a thing that was like, maybe it, it's not gonna arrive on time. And then a couple days later it was like, maybe you want a refund now? And I was like, that that's weird Amazon. So I think it was stolen in transit or something like that. But it worked out okay, because Newegg had these go on a little bit of a sale, so I was able to buy two of them, and these are the WD Red Pro drives, which are 7200 RPM instead of 5400 RPM, which means they are overall faster. So this is going to be a somewhat safer, redundant RAID 1 configuration in that system, so and that'll let me copy stuff to it that I want to have at least a little bit more safely backed up than otherwise. Yes, I know RAID is not a permanent long-term backup solution, but uh, 20 more terabytes of storage there for me. Wow. One more new egg box here, and if you guys watched that video, you probably know what is in this box as well. Here it is, an air cooler. I've, I've just been so fond of air coolers recently. This is the Dark Rock Pro TR4 by Be Quiet, and I actually already used one of these in the system that I just built. So if you guys didn't uh, see that video, check it out and you can see me actually installing one. But the one that Be Quiet sent me was actually supposed to be for the streaming and capture system that's over here. And, uh, but then I needed it early, so I used it for that, and then I just ordered a replacement, so when I do that system, I can use this. Now, I believe this next box is what uh, goes with that stuff, which is the rest of the stuff that Be Quiet sent over. They did send a Silent Base 802 case that's uh, over there. It, I, I do not have enough space over here to show that to you guys as well, but that's the case that I will be building in. And then Be Quiet also sent a power supply and I believe some extra fans, which I think is what's probably in here. Oh, that's heavy. That's a big boy. Wow, that's heavy. That's all that's in here. Look how shiny it is. That's the Dark Power Pro 12, which is a 1200 watt, 80 plus titanium rated power supply by Be Quiet. This is their newest, newest line. So I will pop this out of the box really quick just to show you. It has like all of the fancy new features that you would want for a power supply that is admittedly also quite expensive if you look at the retail prices for this unit. Main features of course are 1200 watts of power delivery and 80 plus titanium efficiency rating, which means you're going to be using as little power as you possibly can relative to what your system would normally use in order to power it on. That's, that's kind of how efficiency works. Very fancy packaging as well. What is this? All right, so this is like an accessory box where you've got your fat beefy cable because a lot of the standard AC adapter cables are not rated to provide up to 1200 watts of power. So, so they use a special plug on this to make sure you don't accidentally swap in some other uh, AC power cable that might melt. They give you cable combs, thumb screws, uh, some zip ties, cleaning cloth, some Velcro ties. 
user manual, of course, and then these are all the cables. One of the bonuses of this power supply, and maybe a value add if you're considering like a power supply and then buying some really nice sleeve cables, is this already comes with some pretty nice sleeve cables. Those are all the uh, peripheral ones right there, and then they've also got separated out like your 24 pin and your PCIe and all those. And while these aren't quite as thick or luxurious, I'd say, as some of the custom sleeve cables that I've used from like Source Customs and that sort of thing, they are a big step up over the standard cables you get. And they definitely didn't cheap out on stuff like the terminations here. There's, there's no heat shrink that can be seen or anything like that. So I should be able to just use these cables and it should look quite nice. The weight of a power supply is, is never really the end all be all of how good a power supply is. There's a lot more to it than that, but good power supplies are always a bit heavier. But here you can see fully modular connections for all the drives, everything nicely labeled. There's some protective plastic over the Dark Power Pro and Be Quiet logos there. I'm gonna leave those on for now since I can already tell that I'm getting fingerprints all over the nice brushed metal housing of this unit. But hey, that's looking pretty good. Really nice power supply, so looking forward to assembling this build. And now I think I will try if I can to open the Intel stuff, because like I said, Intel 11th gen is launching very soon, March 30th, and they've been sending a lot of things, and in fact, they sent stuff really early in the month, and then the launch date or the embargo date for reviews was changed. And then a bunch of other people started posting reviews anyway because they were able to buy the parts early at retail. So I guess it's been a little bit of a weird launch, but uh, this arrived and it says this, this side up and I'm really not sure what, uh, what the deal is with it or what makes it special, but let's pop it open and see what Intel has sent over. Blue box inside, it does say Intel on it. I guess we get to do the uh, liftoff reveal here. Aha. Uh -huh. Oh, that's why they said this end up. Because there's a couple CPUs in here, which are supposed to be in these little things so that they're like presented there for you when you pick. Oops. CPUs are very, very sturdy. Linus drop tips. But that's pretty much it. A little display uh, in Intel Cube. This is, what does this do? Does that come? Oh. Did I break it? Is it supposed to do something? Is it supposed to make the Intel chime when I open this? Is that what was supposed to happen? I feel like there's something going on underneath here. Okay, I have, I have no idea. I'm not sure I'm not sure what I was supposed to do with that, but um, the, this is what I've done with it. That kind of looked like there was circuitry there, or some, some sort of a contact point for like an electronic thing. And they've sent me something before that makes the Intel shine when you do it, but I guess this is just like a little block of Plexi or something with the Intel logo on the bottom, which isn't useless. I'll add that to my little Intel tin here. This, this was full of mints, which I called Mintels. You know what, the only thing that actually matters in the, that box is, is these two things right here. So it uh, looks like we've got an i5 and an i9. I'm hoping the i5 might actually be an interesting chip that you guys might be interested in hearing more about because there have been lots of tests already of the eight cores. So it looks like we do have an 11600K, but it does look like, practically speaking, we have an 11900K, which is the flagship eight core, and we have an 11600K, which is one of their six cores. And since the eight cores have already proven to be not all that competitive with uh, AMD's 5000 series CPUs, I'm kind of more interested in the six cores and if there is a viable six core option that can provide that kind of balance between price and performance versus what AMD has to offer right now. I guess I should start testing these pretty soon or something, but we'll get to that. Oh yeah, and there's also this. Uh, like I said, Intel's 11th gen launch has been rolling out slowly and it seems like they've changed their minds a few times. So this actually arrived really early and there were unboxings of this package like several weeks ago. But this specifically says Meg Z590 Ace Media Special Packaging. So I, I believe I know what's in here. I think it's a CPU a motherboard and a 360 millimeter all-in-one liquid cooler. All right, I'm opening this on its side so you guys can actually see. And it looks like we have an MSI. Oh, look, it's a Dear Editor reviewer thing. MSI puts this in with all of the samples that they send out. This says, Intel and MSI are ready to delight you the new year with Perfect Media Kit. Grand to present the best performance combination with Intel Core i9 processor, Meg Z590 Ace, and MSI MPG Core Liquid. 360, K360, which is an all one. Oh wow, it's it's got its own separate box, okay? It says Intel X MSI. Slide this sleeve off here. And, oh look, it's even got a warranty void if seal broken sticker right here. Oh no, I can't return it anymore. Come on. Oh, oh hey, everything's packed in there pretty tightly. So over here is a little thingy with uh, a CPU. Look at that. It's another 11900K. 
I now have two 11900Ks. That gives me as many cores as one 5950X. I bet Intel was hoping I wouldn't say something like that. Apart from that, we have a motherboard, the MEG or MEG Z590 Ace, and we've got an all-in-one liquid cooler. So this piece here in particular just seems to be just the CPU. Even <laughs> not returnable if seal is broken. Uh, I tricked them there though, I did, I see. I feel it, oh wait, no. Never mind. still void. Warranty's still void. Let's add that to my ever increasing stack of 11th gen core CPUs. MSI makes liquid coolers now. Uh, the MPG Core Liquid K360 liquid cooling. I have not used this before. I don't know how good it works. Looks like it has fancy RGB on the pump block there, uh, which is pretty expected these days. And I guess we can take a quick look at this Z590 motherboard. I'm already feeling like I have so many more things to unbox, so I don't want to take too long, but uh, oh, it's heavy. Big old fat heat sinks on this boy. There it is. Nice looking motherboard. It's a nice thing about both, uh, you know, your AMD versus Intel comparisons. The different companies make all the motherboards, so the motherboards can look nice regardless of what you feel about the CPUs that slot into them. Look, it's even got a fancy backplate. Actually is a pretty nice looking motherboard, I will say. Good job, MSI. I wonder if this will be a viable partner for the six core, or if this motherboard costs more than the six core on its own. Like I said, lots of stuff here for the uh, Intel launch that has been arriving for, for weeks, for several weeks now. Some of this stuff arrived earlier, some of it arrived later. And for me, for my part, if I know there's a launch coming up, but I know it's not for a while, uh, I will often just leave stuff in the box until I know I'm actually gonna use it. Now, funny story about the uh, Intel CPU launches recently is that, you know, they have multiple board partners they work with, uh, MSI, Asus, Gigabyte, of course, and then you've also got like ASRock and some other brands in there, but I usually only have one CPU. So often the motherboard brands will send me motherboards that they want me to test out or try or show off on the channel in some way, shape or form. And I try to do that, assuming, you know, that it's a good platform and everything like that, but I don't always get to do that. So case in point, this pile behind me right here, has quite a few 400 series Intel motherboards in it that I never really did much with. So uh, I'm, I'm gonna need to figure out some good solution for some of that stuff really soon. So in the interest of time and, and whatnot, I am going to take the rest of these things, which I, I believe most of these are motherboards out of their boxes. And I'm, I'll just show you what arrived because I, I really don't have time to go over all the motherboards quite yet. Um, all right, we've got an Aorus Z590 Aorus Master and the Asus ROG Maximus 13 Hero. So with the MSI Meg Z590, I've already got my trifecta of uh, Asus Gigabyte and MSI, but Asus, I think, decided that they wanted to go the extra mile and hence we have this box here. More Z590, this one. The heck is this? box inside a box. I already have too many boxes. Oh look, nice to have twins. So there, uh, I got another one. Maximus 13 Hero from Asus. There is one digit difference between the two model numbers here, so I wonder if they already made a revision of this board. It's interesting. Either way, I have two of them. I've got the Aorus Z590 Aorus Master, and then also uh, probably a more reasonably priced Asus Tough Gaming Z590 Plus Wi-Fi. I think that's all the motherboards I'm expecting, um, but uh, on the plus side as well, my pile seems to be getting a bit smaller, so that's useful. This box has lots of tape. Lots and lots and lots of tape. Ooh, plastic. Ah, ah, this is from Leon Lee. So I wasn't sure, but I wanted to say at the beginning of this video that um, I'm not gonna be unboxing any graphics cards today because I didn't want to be teasing you guys with stuff that, you know, was very difficult to obtain. That said, I should apologize to you guys because here we have a bunch of the Lian Li Uni Fan SL120. We've actually not only got the SL120s, 120 millimeter versions, I have SL140s. These are really hard to, these, are difficult to find. These, I don't even think really exist in the world yet. This is probably just a figment of my imagination. The uni fans in particular are in high demand because they're available in a couple colors, black and white, uh, and they daisy chain together. They sort of interlock with each other so you don't have to run a bunch of cables individually from each fan. You do still need to plug all of them into a control unit and then plug that into your motherboard. 
and then you also need to run software in order to properly control the RGB LEDs on them. However, once you get all that up and running, uh, it's a really nice and elegant solution. And for me, anything that can simplify the uh, process of installing and setting up RGB lighting in a computer, uh, I'm all for. So I have a bunch of these because I'm going to be using them in a build. And I'm not sure if you guys can see it, but that build is going to be using the water cooling parts that are in the case that's right down there, which uh, EK sent over in my last unboxing video. I unboxed that and I was like, I need to do a water cool build with an AMD CPU and a GPU and that gear. So I'm going with the Alien Lee case as well, which is the other thing I have to unbox down here, but I'll do that in just a moment. Also for that build though, actually this isn't for that build. This is for that build and I already opened this, but I wanted to show you guys this as well because this is one of the cool things that arrived recently. It's memory. This is an Orion kit of memory by Gal. I am told that G-E-I-L, which is Golden Emperor International Limited, is pronounced Gal. And if this is the first time you guys have ever heard that, well now you know, and if it doesn't make sense to you, Shut up, it's called Gal. It's funny because I was specifically told that and I'm often, you know, I, I try to ask if it's if it's up for debate at all how to pronounce the names of some of the companies that I work with. So it's good to know, but I, it's it's kind of like Leanne Lee's Strimers, S-T-R-I-M-E-R, -E and then they try to be like, that's pronounced Streamer. And I'm like, no, it's it's Strimer or Strimer at best. It doesn't really matter though. The point is uh, they hit me up to, and said, hey, we have this cool memory kit. Are you interested in taking a look at it? Uh, it's a 64 gig kit. So these are 32 gig memory sticks. This is from their Orion series, and it's also DDR4 4000, cast latency 1824 So, so a lot of capacity, especially if you're building on a mini ITX board that didn't have uh, very many DIMM slots, or you're working with only two, and fast speed at DDR4 4000, and not the worst timings either, I will say. Now it does not have RGB LEDs. And in my opinion, that's totally okay. I think those are a bonus, if, if even a bonus, but these are also made to work with Ryzen. So even with the memory capacity that you've got going on there, 64 gigs, you should still be able to plug in your XMP settings and be up and running. These also come in gray, which is what I was first offered. And I was like, ooh, that would be a perfect solution for the AMD build I'm planning, since I want to go mini ITX, do you, could I get the red kit? And at first they were like, no, and then they were like, yes. So this is the red kit that they sent over, and this will be installed in that system once I put it together. And of course, a big thank you to Gal for sending this over. Part of the reason I'm doing this unboxing video is to show you guys some of the build projects I have in the works and some of the parts arriving for them. So I went and fished this out just to show you. I'm not gonna take it out. This is the Silent Base 802. Already plenty of reviews up on this case. It's a really nice one from Be Quiet. And since my streaming capture system over here since 2015 has been in a Be Quiet case, I decided why not go with Be Quiet again? So my 24 core Threadripper 2970WX, whichever one that is, the, the WX one that's currently in Riptide. That's what I'll be installing in the Be Quiet case, uh, along with the, the same motherboard that's in Riptide and stuff. That's why I had to build the one system so I can decommission Riptide and do this transition thing. And then of course there is this case. And this case is the one that I'm building the AMD system in. It's gonna be water cooled. And this is the Lian Li 011 Dynamic Mini, which is a really cool, unique case. It is on the larger side for a Mini ITX case, but it does support a lot of water cooling configurations and it supports full-size ATX motherboards, again, with some of the configurations, because it's a very modular case. You can slide stuff up and down to fit Mini ITX, Micro ATX, or ATX. And it has the same kind of layout that's been popularized by the 011 Dynamic that Lian Li originally made in collaboration with their Bauer. So this build is gonna be special. And to that end, I am still taking some feedback on it. So I have not decided on the motherboard. I have not decided on custom sleeve cables. I need to get a power supply for it still. And I was planning to use the RX 6900 XT, the highest end graphics card that AMD currently makes in this build. I do have one of those though, and I would like to keep it for future testing. So I haven't asked AMD yet, and I hope I'm not preempting anything, but my idea was if they could provide CPU and GPU for this build, I could totally give the whole thing away once I'm done. Or I was also considering like auctioning it off for charity or something like that. There are options, but uh, this is a build that uh, I'm excited to put together, but I don't necessarily have plans to use here as opposed to like my editing system or my streaming and capture system. So that remains to be seen. And if you guys have suggestions or feedback on that one, you're very welcome to post that in the comment section down below. And now I, I, I think I'm on the last box. Wow, this moved a little bit faster than I was anticipating, I guess. This one has also come all the way from the wonderful land of Taiwan. 
that I miss. Not been back to in quite a while. Once again, we have a somewhat nondescript wad of packaging. Unwrap some of this. All right, more memory. That's what this is. This is from G-Skill. Uh, glorious, glorious packs of memory. So, G-Skill sent me a few kits for a few different purposes. Eight gig by two, ooh. Wow, all right, so that's eight gig by two. This is 3,600, 16 gig by two. 3,600, 16 gig by two. This is 3,200, 16 gig by eight. <laughs> all right, and then this final kit here is the big boy. So, all right, what's the point of all these kits? You might be asking, you might be asking me. Why do you need so much memory, Paul? Well, first off, this kit, which is the big kit, which is again, a DDR4 3200, but a 128 gig kit. Eight 16 gig sticks in here, and it's uh, that nice cast latency 16 stuff. So this kit is going to go in the updated version of the streaming and capture system, which I haven't come up with a good name yet for. But this is gonna be in the Be Quiet build, which is gonna be pretty dark for the most part, not planning to do a whole lot of lighting, so the black and white aesthetic is just perfect. And since that is an editing system, more memory is generally better. And so I was like, G-Skill, I'm looking for a kit that would match well with a Threadripper setup, and this was what they sent over, and I think they chose quite well. Meanwhile, for benchmarking, what I've been using is DDR4 3600 kits. So this is DDR4 3600 cast latency 16, but it's a two by 16 gig kit. So these are 32 gig kits, which will allow me to do side-by-side -side testing with dual matching 32 gig kits if I have an AMD and an Intel system and I wanna have the same setup, for example. And I went with 32 gigs because there are some games that do perform better with more memory. So I feel like the standard is shifting Slowly, slowly, you're still fine with 16 gigs right now, but it's slowly shifting to 32 gigs being a little bit of a better bet. And DDR4 3600, I think, is a speed that a lot of people will be actually buying memory at. So I felt like that was a good solution. Finally, I have another Royal kit right here, which is uh, G Skills. It's like, it's the same memory and everything and the configurations underneath. This is just a different finish with a very shiny thing and the sort of, and the fancier sort of faceted RGB uh, topper right there. But this kit is DDR4 4400 speed, and it's it's still cast latency 16, 16, 19, 19, 39 at 1.5 volts. So this is an overclocking kit. So if I ever do anything akin to like the RIP-J, RIP-GN series again, or if I'm just trying to put together a setup and I'm like, I, I want the best thing I can put in here and the fastest memory for gaming or whatever, uh, I can pop this kit in and I can get some really nice speeds, hopefully. So that rounds out my final package, which was again sent over by G-Skill and a huge thank you to them for their support. But guys, I am out of things to unbox, so I think that's gonna have to wrap it up for this video. Stay tuned for some coverage of Intel's 11th Gen Core CPUs that are launching really soon. Stay tuned for continued coverage of my build projects that I have, that's ongoing. I have uh, at least a few more videos to produce on those. And then of course, that uh, epic water-cooled system that I'm putting together ASAP. And uh, if you guys have any, any feedback on any of these builds or stuff that I've unboxed today, you can of course leave that down in the comment section below. You can also check out my store down there at paulshardware.net. You can buy shirts, mugs, pint glasses, and more, as well as my new beer sets with the bamboo coasters. They're really nice. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and we'll see you in the next one.